You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob, and this is episode number 481. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. We appreciate it very, very much. We do appreciate it. I appreciate all the time you've taken to do that favor for me. What is that favor? I'm talking about the reviews and sharing the podcast if you found it valuable, informative, or unique. Because when you share the podcast, other people have the opportunity to see it. And when they do see it, we can progress this industry through education, which I think is so important. But also a big special thank you to our friends at Videoblocks. Head over to videoblocks.com forward slash drone 2016. Why would you do that, Rob? You know what? They have got a huge library, hundreds of thousands, right? Of spots, video spots, Copyright audio. free clips, stock, like stock Absolutely. video clips. Yeah. Just Things so that you much. can incorporate into the videos that you are making, you are creating. And there's shots that you're not going to be able to get on your own unless you have a helicopter, right? Well, chances are I do. Well, maybe. Paul does. So maybe you can hire Paul to do that. <laughs> Otherwise, you can go to videoblocks.com or audioblocks.com, and they're offering our listeners a special. If, again, you go to videoblocks.com forward slash drone2016, you're going to get 100 bucks off an annual membership to as many of those things as you'd like for 149 bucks. It's a great deal. Check it out, and you're going to be glad you did. Definitely. You are going to be happy. You're going to be so happy. It's going to be like flying a phantom for the first time. Ooh. Pure bliss. All right, now let's move on to other things that cause pure bliss. What are we talking about today, Rob? Well, we've got somebody who's having some connectivity issues. Shocker. Relatively new to his drone, it sounds like. And so he's just looking for a little help. So he says, Paul. Paul, hey, what do you think, man? Huh? Help me out. Hello guys, my well, Victor is my name and I live in North Carolina, I wish it's 7. I bought a Phantom 3 4K, which the video is good, but I'm losing connection around 700 feet. Um, I bought it a month ago and started listening to you guys and I'm catching up with your episodes. Hey, um, our ARG tech antennas, extenders and IT lights. Are those worth it? Will that solve problems with um, drones flying away? Will that solve problems with um, um, routers and Wi-Fi um, interference? Um, love your show. Um, I show my work. I'm a product reviewer um, on my YouTube channel, um, Preliminary Films. So, uh, thank you. Um, I'll be listening. Thank you, Manuel. We appreciate you listening. We appreciate you sending in a question. We do have a question if you're... Do we call him Manuel or Victor, right? Yeah, I was kind of a little confused by that. Hey, guys, it's Manuel. My name is Victor. Um, Manuel, Victor is my name. I think it was that referring to his first and last name, right? Interesting. Is my name. Anyways, thank you for listening. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. And it's a good question. I'm sure it's happening to a lot of people. Kind of, well, it's a multifaceted question. I'm trying to figure out the core of the question. But um, the the old Phantom 3s... Uh, especially the Phantom 3 4K, which is the the, the base uh, kind of of the Phantom 3 line, runs off the older Wi-Fi based system that DJI yeah. used to use. They haven't used that system for quite some time now, um, and the reason is is it's just unreliable. When it came out originally with the Phantom 2 Vision Plus, there were a lot of issues. I remember, in fact, some kid at UNM had bought one and then tried to fly it around Johnson Field, which is right by all of the dorms, and mm-hmm. they were, they're pumping out Wi-Fi on every floor. And um, It's like a pinball machine? <laughs> the drone acted so erratically. <laughs> it was it was like, I mean, I was looking at the kid like, man, it would suck to be that kid. Like, wow. And I'm sure he didn't know what to do. No. No, he didn't know what to do. Um, but... No matter what system you use, there is always going to be some level of interference. It just depends on how much. Now, a little tip and trick for you you pilots out there. uh, If you have an ACOM uh, A14 radio, the radio that you can listen in to the control frequencies from the tower, 
depending on how high your squelch is on the radio is a great determination of how much radio interference there is. So like, for example, when we were doing that class in Colorado, I had to turn my squelch all the way up to seven or eight to silence it, Hmm. which meant there was massive interference in the area. If you've got a squelch of like one to four, there's not that much interference in the area. So a little tip and trick for you guys out there. Hmm. Uh, nothing, nothing too scientific on using that. Um, but no matter what drone system you use, there are going to be points of interference, and but more so with the system that you're using uh, because of the type of, of video transmission system it uses. I mean, to prove a point that this is still an issue, even DJI just released one of the new features of the Phantom 4 mm-hmm. Pro, which is that you can switch from 2.4 to 5.8 when you want to, which is really cool. It's because they realize you're going to run into one or the other oftentimes. Definitely. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because a lot of people really don't understand where in- interference can come from. Um, it can come from FM radios. It can come from ham radios. It can come from microwaves. That's the absolute worst. So it's all um, noise in the air that's affecting your... And it's, it's funny, Your too, noise. because you can't see it, but now that people fly drones, they operate radios, they're getting to know the radio spectrum, it's like everything around you is connected. Right. What well, You can't see it, but it's connected. Yeah. Um, so that being said, oh, where am I going with this? So um, technically speaking, why is he losing connectivity? Because there's interference. Okay. He's, he's got a lesser quality system. Um, but that's great because he's starting out small. He's learning the intricacies. Sure. No matter what, I mean, even with my Inspire 1, uh, for a while when those new firmware updates were firing out this last summer, which was horrible, um, I was having connectivity issues all the time. I remember that, actually. Mm-hmm. I mean, horrible issues. And I was having to learn that to frame up a shot and then move the shot as I would want to and then go back, watch the footage, because I, I didn't have a feed that whole time. So I'm literally like trusting my senses, mm-hmm. which worked sometimes. It's actually an interesting way to hone your skills. Oh, hardcore. To kind yeah. of really focus in on what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Because you're, you're not able to rely on the screen. I think it's actually a good test for people and yeah. something that I do when I'm flying. Like, okay, let's work on filming. Let's work on doing this. So um, anyway, going back to that, there's always going to be interference no matter what system you have. The, the, the lesser quality system is definitely you know, going to be cheaper, and you're going to have a lot more interference, and you're not going to be able to fly as far. Um, now he asked the question, uh, do these points of interference cause flyaways? The answer is yes, but you have to understand something before you look at that question. Your video signal and your control signal are on two separate bands normally. So you're normally pumping your control signal out at 2.4 and it's hopping the spectrum in a certain frequency. Um, And then your video is normally on Mm -hmm. uh, 5.8 gigahertz. Um, And a lot of people ask me, well, like how, you know, talking about radio frequency to give you a a perspective of how complicated it is. Some people ask, well, how come I can fly my drone around a cell tower and it's just pumping out radio frequencies all the time? Well, because it's pumping out normally between 300 and 800 megahertz and you're operating at 2.4 gigahertz. So you're pretty far from the spectrum on where they're operating. So it's not going to affect you. Um, So anyway, going back to does it cause flyaways? The answer is yes. Uh, Wi-Fi can cause flyaways. Not properly calibrating your compass can cause flyaways. Not properly calibrating your IMU can cause flyaways. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, absolutely. A lot of interference in the air can definitely cause a flyaway. And it's funny because people really don't know about radio interference. In fact, maybe we should just do one class on radio interference. Because uh, you know those speakers that I love, the UE rolls? So... Mm -hmm. In case you guys don't know, I take a UE roll speaker with me everywhere I go um, just because it's this big and it sounds like a full-size stereo system and it lasts for 10 hours. Um, Well, Bluetooth, anything Bluetooth, it causes more interference, at least that I've recognized, Hmm. than anything else. Interesting. Because you think of it sort of as... um What's the word I'm looking for? Obviously, it's invisible. But I've always thought of of Bluetooth as sort of not going to get in the way. So mm-hmm. I can't think of a better way to say that, but that's not true. That is not true. No. Now, now here's the thing. If I were out on a big yacht and someone was turning on a microwave and I was trying to fly, that would be a lot worse than Bluetooth. Mm-hmm. It would be a lot, lot worse than Bluetooth. So chances are most people who listen to this podcast will never run into that situation unless right. you're at a houseboat on a lake 
and your wife's cooking some stuff and she's lazy and she uses the microwave. <laughs> she's lazy. <laughs> He's always got to get one of those in there on every podcast that's going to get somebody in trouble. <laughs> But so he also I'm kidding. So he, he asked about antennas, <laughs> extenders, and that kind of equipment, whether or not it would help. Um, yes, it would help. Uh, in fact, now I'm going to have to add the link uh, here. I could put a couple different um, extenders. For him, I don't understand why he would buy an extender for that model. I would just move up and drone. I think but he's I, just asking, should yeah. I? Will it help? Uh, will it help? Yes. Or is it going to cost more than your drone? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, if you buy the tacos, I've talked about the tacos so many times, that definitely helps you. Um, I'm not sure, though, on the remote that you get for the Phantom 3 4K that the tacos would work. Because if I remember, you have the older style remote with the Phantom 3 4K. So the tacos may not work for him. I'm kind of drawing a blank here. Um, he can get range extenders. Um, I think it's FPVLR, which is Tony's site. So Tony just got a free shout out. Um, you can check out all the extenders there, and they have multiple extenders. Um, the Inspire One $300 extender will take you up to 10 miles in range. Mm -hmm. Seriously. So, um, now so they you're do not. Help. Now, here is the little FAA thing you're not supposed to fly beyond visual line of sight as a commercial pilot. There's yes. my little FAA disclaimer. Good job. Yes. Way to go. I'm doing the right thing, FAA. Now you do the right thing and clear up order JO7200.23. Okay, I got that up there. <laughs> anyway, sorry, my mind moves a little quick sometimes. Faster than my mouth. Whew, I, I have a hard time keeping up. <laughs> I'm really tired. You're tired. <laughs> I'm the one over here struggling to record five shows, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we haven't even gotten to five or three. Anyway. Now you know what we're doing. We're sitting here recording. But, okay, back to it. Well, that was a long rant. Horrible. I'm sorry. There's a lot of points of radio interference. No matter the drone, you're going to have interference. It's good to test yourself and train that if you ever lose your screen, how do you find the bird? How do you fly at home if you've totally lost uh, the, the, the screen? And, and here's another little tip and trick for you. In fact, I was just training Buffy. I kind of want to bring Buffy back because I want to take her and do some cinematic motions because I feel like maybe she didn't feel like she got everything she could have out of that class. But anyway, going into this, how do you figure out if you've lost your feed to your drone, your drone's like a thousand feet out, how do you figure out which direction you're facing so you can fly it home? The lights? A uh, thousand feet out, you think you're going to be able to see the lights? I have good eyes. I will give you $100,000 if at 1,000 feet you can see the color of the lights in daytime. <laughs> Fine. What's the answer? All right, Elker. It's on. <laughs> yeah. Boy, any it's time, on. Anytime money is I'm mentioned. I'm about to have 100 grand, man. <laughs> All right. No, that is not the right it's answer. It's worth a shot, right? There's no downside. <laughs> there is a downside. If he loses, I get 100 That's grand. That's not what you said. All right. I'm clarifying uh, <laughs> the bet here. <laughs> Um, okay, so the tip and trick here, if you can't figure out which way the drone is facing to bring it home, pitch the drone forward. If you pitch the drone forward and it looks like it's not moving any particular direction, it's moving away from you. That's how you can tell which way the drone is facing. Sweet. Just pitch it forward. Nice. Because you'll always see a little... Or look at the lights. <laughs> Hundred grand's looking real fresh right now. <laughs> anyway, all right. I, I hope this answered this question. I do too. Better drones, better uh, quality of video, less interference. You're always going to have interference. You always have to be aware of interference. It's great to have a spectrometer to measure interference because yes, interference can cause a flyaway. But if you don't do your basic pre-flight check, like even check the KP index of the day, which is solar interference, you could have a flyaway. But if you take the don't crash course and you become a drone you member, do you know what you learn here, Rob, a drone you? How to avoid flyaways? That's how to stop a flyaway. Yeah. And how many, I think, what was it? Like just a couple weeks ago, a member chimed in on the group. Like, I stopped a flyaway. Oh my gosh, I watched the group and I, I watched the class and I stopped a flyaway. I can't believe it worked. Like, I was like, were you trying to have a flyaway? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, no, I'm just shocked that what you said worked. And I'm like, 
Well, I'm glad it worked for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what do you say to that? No, absolutely. <laughs> so anyway, um, lots of interference in your pre-flight. You've got to be checking for interference. Check KP index. You can use the hover app to check that. Um, Will range extenders help? The answer is yes. Um, if you have a regular Phantom 4 remote or a Phantom 3 Pro remote, um, you can use the tacos. I will post a link in that. And all the tacos do is just really focus the beam. It doesn't increase mm -hmm. the power of the trans uh, uh, the transmitter or the receiver. So you're not breaking any laws with the FCC by using the tacos. Um, if you do install the larger antenna range extenders, yes, you're going to get a much better signal. You're going to be able to go very far distances. And yes, it could be quasi-illegal with the FCC. I'm just going to leave that there. All right. And I don't know the law. That's why I'm saying quasi. It because I be. really don't know. If you're pushing more than, uh, what is it, two watts, it is. Got it. So, so just be aware of that. Yeah. But another great question, if we're going to go down the rabbit hole, it, that hasn't been figured out by the FCC or the FAA, is do remote pilots qualify as a pilot to have the FCC license to operate the aviation radio? Hmm. Because pilots, because they're in the aircraft, are allowed to operate aviation radios. But what about remote pilots that are on the ground? Because technically, it's illegal to use an aviation radio from the ground if you're not a pilot in a plane. And yet people are doing it, right? All the time. Yeah. yeah. I think that's probably one of those laws that wasn't, they didn't imagine that people would be using it on the ground. And so it wasn't written accordingly. Or uh, I, I think it's know. also a perfect example of the government thinks that we need this. Society says you're wrong. And then we have a correction. And then, but the correction is never made in writing. And that's why we have 77,000 pages of tax code. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And society just says like we're wrong just because things change. Things it's change. It's not like that they were necessarily wrong in the first place, but. Well, they totally could be like this online portal for airspace. Well, that's a different issue. Yes, that's true. That's absolutely true. So. Yes. In fact, if you are having an issue. No, you know what? I'm not going to give out her phone number just yet. On the way, I'm going to give Heather a chance to come on the show and talk about why she wrote Order J-O 7200.23. I hope she'll come on. I really do, too. We'd love to have and her I don't want, I'm not like I'm not like trying to have like a roast of the FAA no. ATC chair. I'm trying I'm, to learn. Yeah. Like Figure why, things out. Yeah. Like, so that way people can empathize with They're like, okay, why did you have this order? What was the what was the thought process behind this? Yeah, because I'm you know I'm I'm thinking of somebody like that, and I'm imagining she's a smart person, she's a smart woman, she's got a smart team behind her, and they mm -hmm. thought these things through, and so we just need to understand that doesn't mean we're going to agree with what they say. Yeah, but at least give them the benefit of the doubt that, that what they came up with was thought out. Definitely, and there are reasons behind it that maybe we don't understand. And so maybe there I hope aren't. she'll come on. Maybe and maybe aren't. we can talk her into alternative actions maybe we Absolutely. can open her mind to reality yeah maybe we can take this dc native and shake her up a little bit and say this is not working you don't live in reality like get your <laughs> together uh, probably not gonna did it again <laughs> all right <laughs> on that note folks <laughs> thank you for listening definitely guys that's gonna do it for us my name is paul i'm rob this is ask dronio